Welcome to another edition of Coonrod's Corner. Today's topic, what is radiation loss and how does it affect circuit performance? Now here's your host, John Coonrod. Hello, welcome to Coonrod's Corner. My name is John Coonrod. I am a senior market development engineer with Rogers Corporation. I'm going to take the next few minutes to talk about radiation losses and specifically how radiation losses can impact the performance of high frequency printed circuit boards. To begin with, we need to talk about insertion loss and understand the different components of insertion loss, which radiation loss is one of those. The insertion loss of a printed circuit board is really the total loss of the printed circuit board in the sense of RF performance. And insertion loss is uh, made up of four different components, dielectric loss, conductor loss, radiation loss, and leakage loss. The leakage loss of a printed circuit board is usually pretty low and uh, just about insignificant for most applications, so I'm not going to spend any time talking about that today. The conductor loss and dielectric losses, those are very significant at microwave frequencies and at millimeter wave frequencies, 30 gigahertz and beyond. Dielectric losses and conductor losses are even more important, but radiation losses become very important at those frequency ranges. Radiation losses is essentially how much energy is being radiated off the circuit. So the conductor losses are related to the conductor of the circuit, obviously. The dielectric losses related to the substrate itself. Radiation losses is how much energy actually is radiated off of the circuit. And that can be very problematic, especially at higher frequencies. Radiation losses have several different dependencies. Uh, radiation losses are frequency dependent, thickness dependent, and also dielectric constant, decay dependent. The higher the frequency, the more radiation loss. The thicker the circuit, the more radiation loss, and the higher the dielectric constant, or DK, the lower the radiation losses. So DK and radiation losses are inversely related. Radiation losses and the intensity of radiation losses are also attributed to different circuit configurations. Uh, microstrip, coplanar, and strip line configurations all have different concerns for radiation loss. There are also concerns with uh, the type of structure uh, where it could be a filter structure, a coupler structure, a transmission line, those are also different. Signal launch also has a play with uh, the differences for radiation losses and also spurious modes can be an issue as well. So in the picture shown here, we can see the cross-sectional view of three of the most common structures used in high-frequency printed circuit board applications. In microstrip, that structure is actually most prone to radiation losses, typically not at lower frequencies, but at higher frequencies, the microstrip transmission line can radiate a lot of energy. And because of that, many times designers will transition from the microstrip transmission line to a grounded coplanar transmission line when they get into applications that are higher frequency. When the grounded coplanar transmission line is designed properly, the radiation losses can be minimized and sometimes nearly eliminated. The best structure for radiation losses and nullifying radiation losses is really the strip line uh, transmission line. Now, strip line does have an issue of signal launch, and that is trying to get the energy uh, efficiently into the circuit. But once the energy is in the circuit, strip line, if it's designed correctly, will have no radiation losses. Now, signal launch is a term that's used sometimes in the industry, and really what that term is saying is it's the um, transition from the coaxial domain of the connector to the planar domain of the printed circuit board. That transition, the signals have to go from electric field orientation, the cylindrical, to electric field orientations that's planar. That transition is plagued with a lot of issues, and one of them is radiation. So at the point where the connector meets the printed circuit board, there can be a good amount of radiation. Another item that is uh, very important is impedance transitions and impedance discontinuities. Just by the nature of some designs with the uh, microwave and millimeter wave applications, uh, there are purposely uh, impedance anomalies, or it would look like anomalies, but they're actually purposely designed this way to have the discontinuities and different type of transitions. One of the more common one is a low pass filter, and uh, the circuit configuration is set up to where you have low impedance and high impedance and that is called a stepped impedance structure as shown here. So this low pass filter configuration works very good to behave as the, the design of the filter of course and it's really using uh, a narrow conductor which is high impedance and a wide conductor which is low impedance and going back and forth between low and high impedances and this will allow the designer to have a low pass filter function Unfortunately, these transitions of impedance are very dramatic from low to high, and each point where the impedance transitions, that can be a point where radiation occurs. So it's many times when uh, designing a stepped impedance structure like this, the designers will have uh, some smoothing or tapering or chamfering between the different impedance sections. 
Now, understanding radiation losses, as I mentioned before, can be very difficult, and uh, I found a very simple method that can give a good approximation after prototype circuits have been built, and that is to test the prototype circuit in an open environment and note the Q value at whatever frequency is of interest. After that, put the same circuit into a metal enclosure and have the metal enclosure grounded to the circuit ground and take the measurement again looking at the Q value and the difference between the Q value and open atmosphere compared to enclosed, that difference is going to be related to radiation losses. As I said before, radiation losses are frequency dependent and many times radiation losses and the low microwave range, a few hundred megahertz to a few gigahertz, is really insignificant and there's not too much thought that has to be put into radiation loss. However, when you get into the millimeter wave range, 30 gigahertz and beyond, then radiation losses can be very significant and there's a lot of effort put into understanding and minimizing radiation losses at these higher frequency applications. Another influence related to radiation losses is EMI, electromagnetic interference. And electromagnetic interference is how a signal can be distorted by the surrounding uh, radiation effects. So if you have a circuit that is uh, high in radiation loss, that means the radiation uh, is going somewhere, the radiated energy is going somewhere, and neighboring circuits can pick up this radiated energy and it would corrupt the circuits and cause EMI, electromagnetic interference. So radiation loss is good to minimize losses, but it is also very important sometimes to minimize EMI or the interference due to the radiation loss. This concludes this session of Coonrod's Corner. Thank you for watching. For additional information and technical tools, if you are not already a member, join the Rogers Technology Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more of Coonrod's Corner and other informational videos. Rogers Technical Information is also available at your fingertips with the Raj mobile app, available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.